Bindati, thank you so much for having this conversation. This juncture, one day before the election results are going to be out, May 22nd or May 23rd, what do you see the political scenario? Well, what we have seen in the last two and a half or three months of solid hard work in the election campaign, there is a strong anger against the BJP and the RSS. And it comes from different sections. But what I saw so clearly throughout this, that everybody, whether it's the Kisan, whether it's the worker, whether it's the woman, whether it's the Dalit, whether it's the Adivasi, there's a strong feeling that bhai ye paat saal hamare liye bahut nuksan daite. And the difficulties that we face, now we are going to exercise our vote against Modi. So that is one reality which was there throughout. But the second thing I saw, the money in this election. I, I just can't explain to them, because in many of the areas where I campaign, there are very, very poor sections. My campaign was not mainly in the urban areas, but it was a lot in the rural areas. And you cannot begin to imagine the kind of money which we saw there. Everywhere, the new bikes given to BJP people, cars running around, money being just thrown around in the rallies which they are organizing. The amount of money, I don't know, in one Modi rally, because I was in Jharkhand earlier on in the campaign where there was a Modi rally, and they came from all over and how much money was even spent at the, Even at the nomination rally in Banaras, hmm. the estimate was that over a crore was spent. Yeah, exactly. One crore was spent exactly. on just his One nominee. rally. So there's a lot of money also. But I really, I am confident in spite of the exit polls, I'm really confident that um, the Modi Shah do and what they meant for uh, India, I think people are going to reject it. Let's hope, let's hope. <laughs> uh, if we come to just yeah Bengal and uh, Kerala because of all yeah. the all the yeah. uh, debate around yeah. it, all the vilification of the left, the whole issue of the saffron rise in Bengal, etc. I remember this particular publication that it's you were responsible enough. for. Yeah, if you could just speak about that because I think it needs to come back to the debate. Well, I I I, I really thank you for giving us the opportunity to bring it back into the debate because. Really, the kind of things that we have been reading over the last one week or 10 days, and even in, you know, portals and websites who are supposedly progressive and who supposedly have an understanding of the left movement, the kind of slander, I would say, it is slander of the left. To think that left cadre are organizing to bring saffron into Bengal, I just think of, all the thousands of our comrades who in the last eight years of the Mamta Banerjee rule have faced the worst kind of repression, physical elimination of more almost 300 cadres in the last four years, four to five years. The physical elimination. I have met women I've documented it. This is the book, huh? This is one of the books. Okay. This is in defense of the red flag. And this was th four years ago, or three, yeah, three, three or four three, years yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. in which I interviewed people, I spoke, and these are real stories where women are threatened with rape. Women are raped. Women were raped because they refused to give up the red flag, because they fought for the red flag. And we have more than one lakh cases, false cases against our cadre. We have around 20,000 cadre today who are not allowed to go back to their homes. Now, in such a situation where our comrades are fighting at a great dis I'm not being a cry baby. <laughs> I'm not saying, oh, help us, this is what. What I'm saying is, at the ground level, we are fighting. We are fighting for the red flag and everything it represents. Mamta Banerjee's government has decimated democracy in Bengal in such a way, targeting the left. Don't forget, this is a targeting of the left. It's not been a targeting of the BJP that you see in the rallies of Modi and Mamta. I saw a couple of times I went that the rise of the Ekal Vidyalaya and the rise of the Shishu Mandir in the last, since 2011, 
has been a steep spiral. Not that they were not there before, but they were like in small pockets, like they came up as normal private schools. But you see actually in some districts a huge spiral of the Ekoi Vidyale and the Shishu Mandir. And this was happening <coughs> simultaneously with the physical attack and yeah. repression on the left. Where Mamta Banerjee, because she said earlier also, mm -hmm. na, her ideology is no ideology. It's just lumpen politics, frankly. And she first took on this left gov in order to be able to defeat the CPIM. And once the BJP started coming in, she used competitive communal politics in West Bengal. And it has resulted in a situation where first she was accused of appeasing certain minority groups. And now she's competing with the BJP and RSS in communal politics. And after the elections, what has happened right now, happening in the heart of working class area in West Bengal, Barakpur, Bhatpada, that entire belt, mm -hmm. is becoming a Hindu, Muslim, Bengali, non-Bengali fight. Yeah. And I believe that all over the world we have seen where forces unite against the left. Obviously, there's no vacuum. And when you want to eliminate the left and the left is doing a fight back, and then you give space to the right wing in the way that Pamta Banerjee has, extreme right wing. So, but I, ha I have been in the Bengal campaign and I tell you this, that I, I salute my comrades in West. You know, I get emotionally moved, mm -hmm. frankly, when I think of how we sitting here in Delhi and today, right now, what they have faced, what they are facing, how they campaign, how hundreds and thousands of our cadre were out in the campaign. I, I mean, it is because it's the Bengal party, frankly, that uh, I think they could withstand this. I, I salute our comrades. Um, you know, we, are at, we, are, we are still hopeful about the exit polls. We know the results. Yeah, tomorrow. we are, certainly. <laughs> if, if, if they work in the way that the rational estimates work, then Mamta Banerjee will still be very much part of a quote-unquote anti-BJP formation. In that situation, how will things pan out? It's a difficult question I'm asking. Well, it's a question which I really cannot answer right now because um, what Mamta Banerjee has done in the last eight years as far as the opposition is concerned and particularly the left is concerned, what her credibility will be in this front uh, all her leaders are facing cases, as you know, cases of corruption. Um, there is a big section of the TMC which is very closely aligned to the BJP. So what will happen uh, in the coming days to the TMC itself? Uh, because that party is also made up of a lot of defectors from other parties. So I really can't say what will happen to the TMC itself and where Mamta Banerjee will be. So on this question, I would rather be cautious and say, let us wait and see how things pan out before we give any answer. Finally, Brinda, and this is another difficult question I'm asking because detractors of the left ask it, is that when the TMC came to power in Bengal, the allegation is that the left used to function in pretty much the same way when it came to boot capturing and elections and gundagardi, etc. So i just like you to put that well, I would like to put that in perspective because if you look at West Bengal and the role of the opposition in West Bengal, the role of Mamta Banerjee herself in West Bengal, she won elections when the left was in power. Uh, her parties were functioning. Is there a single example of a single party being uh, office of the Congress or the TMC or of any party being captured by the CPM, which is large scale now? You don't have a center from which to function. In 2008 and later in the Panchayat elections, when the left was in power, the TMC got a very good vote share. When the left was in power, the elections uh, before, um, in 2009, the TMC got a very good uh, vote share and they had MPs in parliament. The election commission was called again and again because yeah. after all, we were not in government at the center. <laughs> We had very hostile governments at the center against us who were constantly against Bengal because it was with the left. And therefore, when Vajpayee Ji was also there, I remember 
a big delegation with Mantaji, the late George Fernandez, etc., had all gone to West Bengal and had a detailed thing. They came to the election commission. Election commission also had gone, but they could not find anything. And there was nothing. And there may have been, because some people have said we weren't allowed to vote in such and such booth or that booth. I'm not saying there were absolutely no cases, but there were no cases to make out a case that the elections are rigged. Because we were never in government at the center. Na? In 2004, we supported a government That's at right. the center. And for a short period in 1996. Exactly. Otherwise, we have had governments very hostile to us who were doing everything possible to destabilize the, their front government. When Kamri Jyoti Basu was chief yeah. minister, yeah. when later on when Bududa became yeah. chief minister. So it's not as though we had some patronage from the center which sort of helped us to, you know, rig election. So there was a big momentum for the left because of the policies of the left. And that after 2011 has been reversed. But we are very much in the battle. We are very much in the battle and uh, we challenge uh, them because they've always Bengal, said we're going to finish the left front, red flag Bengal, is over, etc. Bengal, Bengal needs, you, needs the left, particularly if you look at the anti-communal politics. Uh, particularly, we are very concerned about the NRC issue and the kind of frightening resonance it's fight, uh, being made to find among sections of the Bengali population that is vulnerable to this. And we know the role of the left post-partition in terms of rehabilitation of refugees and not criminalizing the issue. So will the Beng left in Bengal really fight on this NRC issue because it's a frightening scenario? It is a frightening scenario. There is an Assam Accord. There is an issue of uh, people who have come who are not within the regulations. That issue our Assam party is dealing with. And we have said that the NRC is being used as an instrument to attack linguistic minorities yeah. and yeah. religious minorities, and we will fight it. And I also want to say that this communal polarization, yeah. which desperately the BJP and the TMC to a great extent are polarizing Bengal society, that is the greatest challenge before us in Bengal today. And Tisa, we need because I know you have seen the work that you have done and the tremendous courage with which you have taken up issues of secularism. If you look at it in this election, the issue of secularism, yeah. who spoke about that word except the left? The word has gone from the dictionary, political dictionary. It's as though when the BJP says it's a dirty word, it is a dirty word. So the principles of secularism, that's what we need to fight for and restore to a great extent. And I'm confident that Bengal and the traditions of Bengal of secularism will triumph and uh, that we will have the support of people like this, that Setelwad. Well, you're working a lot in Assam, so we definitely want this. to work in Bengal too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.